Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on Guest of the Week. Uh, this is a platform where we engage top personalities who have uh, met their marks in several fields of human endeavor or are still making their marks, you know, at different level of governance, economy, politics and so on. Uh, not only at the national level but even at the international level. Uh, and of course, uh, it's a platform that uh, you know brings uh, you closer uh, to some of these top personalities and their views regarding global politics, you know, economy uh, and governance. And today on the platform, we have a very important personality uh, talking about His Excellency Dr. Solomon Momo Christoba Gembe, Senior. Uh, he is, of course, the Sierra Leonean High Commissioner to Nigeria. Uh, he will be talking to us on several issues that have to do with the African continent, uh, you know, and playing its role at the global stage. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for joining us. You're most welcome, my good friend. Really appreciate your coming. <coughs> yes, talking about, you know, Sierra Leone-Nigeria relationship, uh, it has existed for, for many years. Uh, these two countries have come a long way. Um, how would you describe, you know, uh, the, 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 the current diplomatic and bilat bilateral relationship between these two countries, especially uh, in this current uh, democratic dispensation in Sierra Leone? Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Liberty TV for giving me this audience to uh, be your host. Just for the record, mm. I'm the High Commissioner to Sierra Leone, mm. accredited to uh, seven other African countries. <coughs> The Republic of Congo, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, mm -hmm. Benin, Central Africa Republic, mm -hmm. Niger, Gabon, and I'm also the permanent representative of ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between Nigeria mm -hmm. and Sierra Leone mm -hmm. runs so deep. Mm -hmm. I'll spend the whole day here talking Thank about you. it. It dates way back before mm -hmm. even the, during the pre-colonial days. Right. We virtually got independence mm -hmm. back to back from each other. Mm -hmm. You've always been our bigger brother. And uh, our institutions that we have in Sierra Leone, the Fubé College, uh, the, the Nigerian community. Mm. I grew up uh, listening to all kind of Nigerian uh, uh, cultural music, cultural outfits. And so um, we are really our, you're, you're really our bigger brothers. Right. And so um, when you're talking about uh, that relationship, uh, I've even been told that most of Lagos, mm. It's really a Sierra Leoneans over there, mm -hmm. you know, and when you put it in the context of the things you've done for us mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, entire years, time, yes. and, uh, you know, at the end of the war, uh, that even strengthened that relationship further. Mm -hmm. You brought most of our sisters here, mm -hmm. and uh, the population of Sierra Leoneans are just exploding, and few of your guys went and set up shops in Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. and they're doing very well. So the bilateral ties between these, country, these two countries mm -hmm. is really even stronger mm -hmm. than most African countries. People who've lived outside of Nigeria and Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. they see Nigerians and Sierra Leoneans get along very well. Right. And so it's a big honor mm -hmm. that I'm representing my president here mm -hmm. to our brother uh, nation, mm -hmm. sister nation, as uh, his representative and the Sierra Leone's representative here. Right. Uh, talking about the role Nigeria has played, you know, especially in, in bringing stability to Sierra Leone. Uh, you talked about, you know, that. Um, you, you seems to have overcome that mm -hmm. now that uh, you have a political, uh, politically elected government in mm -hmm. place. Uh, how would you describe, you know, the level of st stability and what uh, the intervention has brought to Sierra Leone as a country? You know, um, we have a stable democracy. Right. You know, the war is about 20 some years ago. Mm. And we've got a very dynamic and mm. president who is now our head of state. Mm. Incidentally, this guy used to be a military head of state in our country. Mm. This is his second coming. Right. Paradoxically, the president of uh, Nigeria here, mm. this is his second coming. Right. And uh, even the names, mm. uh, President Mohamedou Buhari, Mm. President Mada Bio. Mm. It's a premonition that this kind of situation is in the offing now. Mm. But we have a very stable environment. The atmosphere is right. We have a democratically elected uh, president. 
who is now almost two years in his, a little bit over two years in office, mm. the environment for investment, for, for, for folks to go and invest in our country mm. is very ripe. We are peaceful. Uh, security is under control. Just like any countries, there might be scobbles here and there, like even in Nigeria. Mm. But on the whole, we have a stable democracy. Mm. Yours is a mixed economy here. Yeah. Over there is a little bit a traditional form of system that we might discuss later on right. in our program. Mm. But for the most part, the political situation is very, uh, uh, we believe in the rule of law. Uh, people have fair uh, representation anywhere. You can demonstrate. You can do anything that you see in the in the Western democracy, freedom of the press. Mm. But we are very strict in terms of law and order, just mm. like here, you know. So people have to obey the law. Right. If you don't obey the law, the law will bite you mm. one way or the other. Mm. But ah. for the most part, we have a peaceful mm. uh, democracy mm. and an enabling environment for people to go to our country to invest. Right. Now, talking about a reconciliation, you've had your turbulent times, as I said, you know. How are you handling you know the the comment i mean the the uh, putting or oh, how you put him behind you know the ugly incidences of the past and building a very strong and viral uh, economy well you see we'll never forget the incident of the past mm. it is something that is a grim reminder mm. where are we going from there right. and one of the things that conflicts have st uh, shown people who studied about conflict mm. that when a society is at the brink mm and gets up from that brink, it will make them stronger and even more powerful. Right. Take, for instance, the history of Rwanda. Mm. You know, so we've come a long way. Right. The fact that we've had two change of regime, the President Kaba years, mm. uh, it's a two-term regime, 10 years. Right. Going over to the, uh, the last regime of President Anas Bai Kuruma, mm. peaceful transition of power mm. to now our current president. Mm. So we've really learned some lessons those threats of the past will still linger. Mm. That's why our president believes in reconciliation. Right. You must have heard about Bintuman in one, Bintuman in two, Bintuman in three. Mm. He's always in the business of bringing all hands on deck because this is a, mm. this is a fight to take Sierra Leone to the next level. Mm. It cannot just be done by one party. Right. It has to be done by uh, the opposition. We have many of them in the mm. country. So we continue to reach out. We are members of the opposition serving our government, mm. you know. So, uh, but we will not forget mm. the ugly past. And we will still remain grateful mm. to our bigger brother here, <coughs> who helped to create even an enabling environment now, <coughs> right. for us to be able mm. to breathe some sigh of relief. So mm. each time you remind me about our past, mm. I'm going to remind you <coughs> about the role played by our bigger brother. Right as we move along in this conversation right so the, the good thing is that uh, mm. while not forgetting yes. but you are building up you know yes. picking the pieces you know yes. to to consolidate and and bring you know the country together for greater heights exactly right okay yeah, uh, yeah let's let's talk about you know uh, uh, africa generally uh, you know uh, the countries in africa have, have been having issues you know especially with regards to security um, Nigeria has intervened in several African countries to bring stability. Mm. Uh, but today, uh, the issue of uh, insurgency and, of course, uh, these criminalities that come with the, you know, the terrorist groups and so on, uh, mm. seems to be pose a greater challenge, you know, mm. to African countries, especially those in the Sahel region. Um, mm. How are you looking at, uh, you know, the efforts being made by this government, especially in the Chad region, you know, to overcome this challenge? Well, I mean, uh, conflicts have always been there in society. Mm. And I, I guess um, one of the byproducts of this coronavirus mm. is to learn Africa a lesson that perhaps we should be more concerned now mm. in getting together, in working together as a team. Mm. The ECOWAS, mm. of which we are is a member state, mm. has continued to preach this uh, conflict is all over the place. Mm. But, you know, it's begin to kind of temper a little bit mm. when you are faced with the reality like those who are fermenting a conflict mm. that is not really going to take anybody anywhere. You know, I mean, so take, for instance, Sierra Leone we went through our own past and we are now building institutions. Mm. 
part of the, the, the things that conflict does to society, mm. it leads to the decay of institutions. Right. Like when you're talking about education, mm. education is what takes a country from one uh, uh, from the rubbles to some to some higher height. height. Right. Due to mm. conflict in Sierra Leone, those institutions mm. we have we are decayed. So now we are trying to build those institutions, mm. and that should apply as a diplomat. It's really I'll be out of place mm. to signal areas that have conflict. Mm. One thing I can say here, just like you said, mm. Nigeria has its own share mm. of those conflicts. Right. Sierra Leone. We are in a better position now in the sense that we have had that stability. Mm. Although we have some skirmishes going on, whereby the previous mm. administration is really not giving mm. us a breathing space. Mm. But we continue to work on those challenges, mm. and it's not unconnected with some, uh, maybe the kind of things they did in terms of corruption. Mm. We set up commissions of inquiry, mm. and once you're fighting corruption, corruption fights That's you back. Right, right. So when they fight you back, it's something like it's something similar here. Mm. We have uh, we set up, in fact, your good judges from here. Mm. Here there's those cor corruption. I know you're drifting me back to those uh, issues mm. that are happening, mm. but I'm trying to be more diplomatic to say to you without bad mouthing. Mm. But when you have taken uh, mm. people who've been trusted with the affairs of a state right. and resort to uh, plunging those wealth for personal use. Mm and we've created uh, uh, an investigative inquiry in, into them mm. and they've been exposed mm. then guess what they were going to resist mm. and some of the challenges were happening like what happened in uh, my country in Lonsa, we had the, mm. some houses we are burnt down mm. even US today uh, because of the, uh, tr uh, the, 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 the some, some mm. gentleman who was killed by mm. police brutality right. people went on the rapid and burnt places down Mm. It's not uncommon to, uh, it's not really an African thing. It happens all it's over a the world. global issue. Global issue. Right. Then they even attack the police station and even the, 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 the maternity ward. Mm. Some of these little things will discourage investment, okay? Right. If that is what people want to see, that some, some elements of people want to see mm. that the, the new direction fail. Mm. Just like you see, even within here, there might be people with those we bad intentions. Yeah, we don't want the system to work. We don't want the system to work. Mm. And as such, um, mm. and my president mm. believes, he's so tolerant. Mm. For the last two years, he's been very tolerant. They say, oh, mm. he said, he said, but now he's taking his turn. Mm. You're not going to reverse the gains that we've done especially at a time when we have this coronavirus. Mm. We should not tolerate any form of uh, 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 disruption mm. in the affairs of state, mm. you know. So on the on a better note, this is just, it's within the, the resources, mm. the, 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 the means of uh, sustaining those, uh, the law enforcement to, to calm down some of these challenges. Mm. And so it's not even going to disturb the peace as you might you might be concerned about. Great. Okay. We we share similarities just like you said, from yeah. fighting corruption, you know, to insecurity and so on and so forth. Mm. The economy uh, of Sierra Leone is also gradually picking up. Exactly. Uh, we're talking about <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, but then one greater challenge is that of um, uh, food insecurity, which yes. is. You know, it becoming a, a, a global issue, especially yes. with the COVID nineteen pandemic. Exactly. Uh, there has been, you know, projections that uh, the whole world uh, will find it difficult in terms of um, uh, food sufficiency, mm -hmm. uh, especially that the production line has has been disrupted, mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. And but then Sierra Leone already um, is already battling with this challenge. Mm -hmm. How do you think? You know, the post. I mean, the COVID nineteen would perhaps you know exacerbate this crisis okay well before COVID 19 mm. uh we have been building those institutions like the agricultural sector mm. even the president is a master farmer master farmer mm. he has plots of uh, acres of land uh, hectares of land mm. that is planting mm. cash crops you know um, and he encourages all members of the mm. uh, the, the, the his government mm. to participate in that so we've been doing a lot of work in terms of uh, mm. as you can tell uh, we have a traditional form of economy whereby most of it mm -hmm. depends on agriculture. Right. Uh, a huge sector of the population is really into agriculture. Right. Though we have mining and other sectors that are mm -hmm. in good shape. We'll talk about that. Yes, yes but, but the, in terms of food mm -hmm. sufficiency, yes, mm -hmm. it will impact us because we've really been importing a lot of grains and rice from mm -hmm. outside. You know, So this is also a stark reality. Mm -hmm. 
the grain and things we import in from other places is going to dry up. Mm. So we should be ready to build these institutions on our own. So mm. areas that have conflict, people are running away like mm -hmm. uh, uh, refugee camps and all the kind of stuff. Can mm. you imagine what will be happening now in those areas mm. when these uh, pipelines are dry? Mm. The, the, the West that have been helping us, the, the East are battling with the, are battling the, their the own. Challenge. So we are left to our own de uh, devices. Mm. The, so we, it's a stark reminder I keep telling mm. folks that mm. we should be thinking of within Africa, mm. within ECOWAS, how to trade amongst ourselves, how mm. to share grain. Mm. Nigeria is a major producer of rice mm. and, 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 you know, these other cash crops. Mm. So we need to be trading. So Sierra Leone is expecting now that uh, we, it's a good opportunity mm. for you to be sending your grains over to us. Mm. And uh, we'll send some other things that you need from us. And mm. we start trading along this order. But right. Uh, right. food sufficiency is going to be a threat for, for Right. Even though it also presents opportunity for countries in Africa that have the potentials and the resources, mm. you know, to liberate on the agriculture sector to exactly. produce more. Exactly. We'll, we'll be talking about that. But then... Uh, you talk about something very important that is uh, trade you know opportunities among African countries mm -hmm. uh, the AFCTA you know the the Africa trade continental trade agreement and all of that exactly. was done to facilitate this uh, yes. but there are challenges here and there in terms of implementation mm -hmm. um, especially with uh, you know the closure of the borders mm -hmm. Nigeria did close the borders before even the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, for, for certain reasons yes uh, that has slowed down you know the the gains of that agreement yes. so how do you think we can never get around this especially now that we are faced uh, with this challenge of COVID-19 well COVID-19 is telling us mm. that uh, we can no longer depend mm. on the people outside of Africa mm. we can even tell when uh, mm. things started happen here mm. most of them packed up their bags and they left mm. they left us right. So we see that uh, unemployment population, uh, uh, um, unemployment opportunities mm. are really getting dire. Mm. All those who are out there should be thinking of coming back. Mm. So when you're talking about trade mm. amongst ourselves, that is going to be the key post COVID-19. Mm. We have everything in this continent that people from outside need. Mm. I mentioned that in another program. Right. If Africans should start mm. thinking now, all the heads of state, mm. start looking at this as an opportunity for mm. Africa to be the next frontier mm. in the world. You tell me, mm. why, what do we do with our steel here? Mm. What do we do with our iron ore in, 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 in Sierra Leone and here? Mm. What do we do with our uh, mining sector, mm. our gold, the our gold diamonds, deposit, right. bauxite? Uh, Rutile mm. in Sierra Leone. Mm. Ask yourself one question. It can be argued mm. that Sierra Leone is the richest country in the world. Why? Why not? Mm. If you have trillions mm. in just ingrown mm. mineral resources, we did a geo, geo area uh, survey mm. of the content of what we have on the ground. If we have trillions, mm. and our total debt mm. is 2.5 billion, a country, the population mm. of 7.5. Ask yourself that question. Our total mm. GDP is about four billion, mm. four point five billion. Right. So we have less little debt, mm. but we have plenty of money. Mm. Why in mm. ground? We have oil as well. Mm. We have agricultural land. Mm. What I cannot understand mm. is why should a country like Sierra Leone, mm. over the years, be poor? Why don't we have good water system mm. for people to live a better life? Which is the kind of things we started to build. Mm. Community health. We don't want people to buy big hospitals. Mm. Take care of our people. Provide the basic essentials of life. Mm. For a country, and I'll say it again, mm. if you have trillions, mm. what is one. a trillion? Mm. 1,000 billion mm. is what we have. The GDP of Nigeria mm. is about uh, 420 mm. billion, all right? right, for a population of 200. Mm. I'm putting it to you, my friend. Mm. And guess what? Your debt is about uh, uh, 9.8 billion. Mm. 
which brings you to a percentage of maybe eight point something uh, in yeah. debt. So debt, so debt, so GDP. Still within average, you know. Yes. Still with, with, within a controllable space. And guess what? Mm. It's very small. Mm. That is why you are the greatest economy. Mm. In Sierra Leone, mm. our debt is two point five. Mm. Our GDP is four. So our debt to income, debt to GDP is around 62%. Mm. You know, it should not be mm. because we have the resources. Yeah. We have that. So where, where is the disconnect? Because we have all the resources, human and natural. Yes. Um, beneath the soil, billions of, you know, yeah. dollars in terms of proceeds. Uh, but we are not investing in it. Uh, why is it happening? Is exactly. it that the governments are not um, looking inward? Or is it because they rely on uh, this, uh, you know, foreign economies, donor agencies and all yeah. of that? Well, this new world order after mm. COVID has exposed the West. I'm not kidding you. Mm. If we really start thinking the way we should be thinking, mm. what is it that they are doing in the, in the West mm. that we cannot do here? I'm asking you the question. Mm. If we can do our own steel industry and sell things to them, take for instance, if diamond, mm. why can't we do our own diamonds here, yeah? mm. we, we, we mine it, we cut it, mm. we polish it, put it in our own silver and our mm. own gold, and sell it to them. We can even, in fact, this is what I would suggest to you guys now. Mm. Take for instance, let's, let's cut the chase. Mm. The best hospitals are overseas. The best doctors, mm. most of them really. Mm. Migrate from here. Migrate from here, <laughs> from Africa. Right. So I'm putting it to you. If you pay a, a, a surgeon specialist, mm. say 200,000 mm. a year, and he go get his own house for himself, he gets his own car. Mm. Nigeria can invest in a big hospital like the ones here, mm. invite our doctors, our nurses to, to come man, home. To man them, right. You get them a, a subdivision that they have houses that you give to them, say, take this for 15 years. Mm. Here's a land cruiser. Mm. Rather than pay you 200,000, we're going to give you 100,000. Mm. But every month you can go to your village, you have that luxury. And you have enough money. Help mm. us grow our economy, mm. our hospital system. So I uh, bet you none of them will go. Yeah. We can create our hotel and get the Filipinos to come and work for us here. Mm. The Chinese, majority of the Chinese are poor. Mm. I'm not lying to you. Right. So you can hire them to come work for us. Mm. Like Sierra Leone, if we have a good leader, mm. if we start harnessing our resources, mm. we can call people to come and help. Because the bigger mm. your, your, your economy, mm. and you don't have the labor, mm. the, the, the human, uh, the capital, human cap yeah. uh, capital, mm. so you'll be getting people to come and hire them to work for you. Mm. So, so, so there, there, there are available opportunities and resources paradigm shift. that have not been taking, I mean, taking advantage of. Exactly. You were talking about the need to invest in the value addition. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we have, the, we have the mineral resources, we have all the necessary resources, agricultural resources and so on. But... Yeah. What the missing link, if I understand what you're saying, is our inability to invest in value addition. Exactly. We take most of these things out exactly. for, for processing and then they return them back to exactly. us. Exactly. We have the, the, the human capital in terms of the skilled manpower, but mm -hmm. we allow them to migrate. Exactly. And so, this is what has been happening with time. Mm. The colonial system, the pre colonial system, mm. and the post colonial system mm. are geared for that dependency. Take, for instance, like our Franco mm. countries. Right. They keep some reserve in the French bank mm. to stabilize their currency or mm. whatever that is. Mm -hmm. You tell me. And they are investing those monies overseas mm. in, in France and other places. You know what? Let's try to do our own value addedness here. Right. Right. And we have the technology. Mm. Our folks are educated. Our mm. young youth are educated. Mm. I mean, what is it that the West got that mm. we don't have? Mm. During the days of our colonial struggle, mm. they said the white man can be clever, he can be foolish. Mm. He, he can be clever, he can be foolish. Mm. He can be rich, he can be poor. You get me? Mm. The only difference he has over us was technology. Period. Mm. Now, that difference in technology, mm. we have it. Our guys are the best lawyers, mm. the best poets, the best doctors. Even this middle-level trade, mm. you know what makes the big countries grow? Mm. It's not just PhDs, it's doctors and this, that. It's the middle-level manpower. Mm. They drive the economy. They drive the economy. That's yeah. how big countries like uh, US, mm. Britain and others survive. Mm. It's not this big brain that we all talk about all the time. Mm. 
Now is the time to let our youth mm. embark on how to make even Okada, how to make uh, 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 Keke, right. assemble it here, how to make uh, be a good painter, be mm. a good uh, roofer, mm. you know, lead to trades, right. bricklaying, yes. all these things will generate economic mm. activity. Right. So if you have a slum settlement somewhere, mm. you move those people in the slum to some area whereby a low cost housing mm. and create um, unemployed uh, factories there. Mm and land trade mid middle level manpower training centers mm. so if we start really mm. uh, 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 moving away from too much dependency dependency then you see how these things will turn mm. it it takes hold mm. but you have to have leadership yeah. that are not corrupt yes. that will take these things mm. for the, mm. the, the 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 good of the uh, the people right. and people see people have to have a stake in that government yes you have to love your country like mm. what you do after college when mm. you do this uh, uh the nyc the, the NY, the, the it, scheme it right? creates a kind of instill some values mm. people should love the some pride of the some country patronis, patriotism yeah, yeah patriotism right okay you you mentioned something that uh, really you know uh, agitate me when you talked about all that we have in africa and what we can do you know uh, to liberate on these opportunities uh, are we lacking in visionary leadership uh, leaders you know the first generation leadership in africa uh, think africa resolve africa look inward for solutions to africa's problem are we liking all of this in our leaders today well um i think uh, much is to be deserved from our leaders that's why i always flash point to my president mm. who i believe mm. has proven mm. to be one of the most dynamic and a uh, and, uh, um, forward-looking mm. leader Sri Alion has ever known mm. because uh, his, his, his view of uh, society is for Sri Alionians to benefit mm. from uh, the things that belong to them and uh, he will not encourage people in his government or people associated with leadership not to be focused mm. on the communal good the personal should be put aside. Mm. So if we have leaders like that, who are not in a hurry to see that, let's say education, we're talking about. Right. Uh, health, mm. not big, big hospitals, just little, little things. Mm. We are in gradually that society will grow and protect our, our uh, natural resources. Mm. We, we, are, we had a lot of shady transaction in our mineral transactions, mm. which we had put y yes. on hold. Mm. So what I'm saying, mm. and there's this time limit we see some countries in Africa, people have long stay in power, family, this freedom system and that kind of stuff. I'm not a strong believer in democracy per se, as mm. is practicing with the West. Mm. It has to fit our own situation, not like how it's been yeah, done you know, over the there West, in, right. in the US. But mm. there are some indicators of that democracy that we can practice here. Mm. So you it, know? it shouldn't be a copycat approach. A, a copycat approach. Mm. But it gives us a good shot mm. as to how best we can be able to change regime mm. every time, every time. Mm. Not one person be in power for 20 years, 30 years, mm. as the case might be. Yeah, based, um, on our, based on our peculiarities. Yes. Yeah, we do that, uh, putting in mind, you know, yes. our, our own peculiarities. Yeah, uh, if, if, if a president has done extremely well mm. in his two terms, and the folks want him their back mm -hmm. genuinely not the ones that you manipulate the system right then perhaps you don't limit that time limit to two term mm -hmm. i see it happen in other places whereby i'm not sure if it's in rwanda or some place mm -hmm. whereby the president is doing very well what he has done is mm -hmm. very remarkable mm -hmm. you know so those things are just uh you tell it to meet our uh, a situation that is more african right continuity you know, continuity, continuity in governance yes yes it's yes. key yes know, to sustaining some of this policy exactly but the, the, some of our greatest problem are mm. really the leadership mm. and so if more of our kinds like mm. the uh, brigadier retired brigadier mother mm. uh the president buhari mm. and some of these other leaders mm. uh, uh you know we might have our own challenges but the concept of mm. taking our countries to those levels mm should be encouraged right. amongst the whole spectrum right we'll begin with the ECOWAS community mm. the african union mm. and then the broader 
uh, perspective. African space. Right. Uh, thank you very much. In case you're just joining us, uh, is guest of the week. And uh, today we have a very uh, important guest in the studio talking about His Excellency Dr. Solomon Momo Christopher Gembe, Sr. He is the Sierra Leonean High Commissioner to Nigeria. Uh, together we'll be looking at uh, leadership in Africa, especially uh, the ECOWAS countries, uh, the challenges, the prospects, and how we can leverage on these opportunities. Uh, he's been giving us uh, a lot of insight, you know, with regards to uh, what uh, the African leaders should do in terms of uh, leveraging on the opportunities in the continent, and of course, how uh, we can stand on our feet, and of course, uh, think Africa, work Africa and explore Africa. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue with the discussion. Please stay tuned. not just about the individual news item, it's all about what's behind the news story. What went on before, now and after. We report today not from Kaduna, Nigeria, but from Liverpool in the United Kingdom. Slavery Museum. Thank you very much for staying with us on Guests of the Week. And today, our guest is His Excellency Dr. Solomon Momo Christoba Gembe, Senior, uh, Sierra Leonean High Commissioner to Nigeria. And uh, together, we'll be looking at uh, uh, bilateral relations between Nigeria and Sierra Leone, uh, African cooperation, and of course, uh, leadership, governance, and of course, the opportunities available in our continent uh, and how they can be harnessed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor. We're back. You're welcome, my good friend. Uh, right. You did mention actually earlier on that um, uh, this issue of COVID-19 has changed, you know, the narratives, has also presented a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. in disguise. Mm -hmm. um, African continent, African countries, uh, hitherto, you know, uh, you were talking about the dependence you know, on, on the Western Western countries and so on and so forth, especially the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. uh, before now, we, 
most of our allies, you know, thought that uh, the only place you can go and, and get your life saved is, of course, the Western mm -hmm. <laughs> countries. But the COVID-19 has exposed them. Yes. They became overwhelmed to the extent mm -hmm. that they cannot accommodate anybody. Mm -hmm. Our allies and whoever have to remain within their countries and access the same healthcare facilities their people are also accessing. Um, what do you think this has presented to our leaders in terms of investing in our healthcare service delivery uh, so that post COVID-19, we're also prepared for emergencies like this? Well, I think uh, if you believe in premonition, mm. you believe there's a God. Right. And if you believe that uh, mm -hmm. we've been on the short end of the stick over the years, generations, we've been really exploited mm -hmm. by others. And in connivance with our various uh, rogue individuals and some heads of state, you see that this coronavirus really mm -hmm. is meant to show us a lot of things. Right. And I c keep making a grim reminder mm -hmm. uh, to my audience. That the whole world mm. globally we have as of yesterday mm. 356 thousand people died have died of coronavirus mm. the whole world is about 7.6 billion mm. the united kingdom mm. that would like to run to go to uh their population is 66.6 .6 million right that is 7,460 as of yesterday mm. has died of coronavirus. Mm. The U.S., they've hit more than 100,000. Mm. The epicenter. Is the epicenter. Uh, right now, it's uh, the epicenter. It's uh, 100, mm. 100,443. Uh, and their population is about 330. Mm. Mm. Nigeria is uh, 200 million. Mm. As of yesterday, Mm. Only 254 people have died mm. of coronavirus. Mm. I see you guys chewing the leadership. Hey, hey, hey what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm. Do you see what is happening around the world? Mm. Sierra Leone. Only 45 cases. Mm. We had Ebola that was nothing mm. compared to COVID. Right. Thousands of people died. Mm. In our country, only 45 people have died. Mm. Of coronavirus. Of coronavirus. Mm. And people start screaming. Mm. Are you dumb? Mm. What's our employment here? Yes, we're closing some few banks here. Things are a little bit. Our petrol dollars went down a little bit. Mm. But I bet you, with mm. time, it's going to go back up. Mm. You, 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 are you following me? Why is it doing good? Or back uh, to, our, to us because sometimes uh, over reliance on this on this yes. petrol dollars yeah. has also helped us to neglect other sectors that we that's can. why i see you put a lot of emphasis on steel mm. and, mining. And, and mining and other things right. so it's a paradigm shift it's a case a geographical shift mm. but the wider picture here is africa that is a country a continent of 1.2 billion mm. only about 3,592 people died as of yesterday. Mm. But, but is it because of our strong health institutions or because of perhaps I would say divine intervention? Well, I want us to look at it in that divine intervention. And let's see what the world post-19, uh, mm. uh, uh, COVID-19, mm. will teach us. Mm. You know, if you are now, you've been mm. going for, you mentioned something about uh, medical what? Uh, Tourism. Tourism. Mm. You have your private jet. Mm. You have everything every month you go for that tourism mm. and now what is happening to you mm. you sitting down here at the hospital that you've been shown in is what you might be uh, so engaging the yeah. doctors to yeah so that tells you that whatever they have here mm. let's try to get it here now right. we don't know what is going to happen next mm. we should be looking ourselves at ourselves now mm. these people are going to be nationalistic mm. if you know about the west i hate to call other countries mm. when their president talk they're talking more about what they can do for themselves. Right. They're going to care about you. If you're going to look for a job in a place that has uh, uh, 30 million people getting to 40 unemployed, mm. is there a place for you? They cannot even get a place for themselves. And you have all the wealth here. So to my fellow Syrian unions, I will say this. Mm. With the kind of debts that we have, mm. with the kind of uh, wealth that we have, mm. and the visionary leader that we have, mm. Let's pray to God that we have good-hearted people mm. 
to see our debt, hmm. see our, our 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 resources, and might come to our aid. If Nigeria, hmm. that has the greatest wealth, could diversify hmm. a little bit, don't forget about oil. Hmm. But now it's time for us to start looking at hmm. what we have in Sierra Leone that you can help build here right. and export. Hmm. You look at other countries what they have. Hmm. And start building those institutions with that in mind, mm. the value addedness that you talked about. Right. We don't need to get go take our goods, our raw materials over there. Mm. For Let's start processing it here. Mm. We can start even with chocolate. We can start even with granite, mm. peanuts, and keep going up. You know. Mm. So essentially, I believe post mm. COVID nineteen, mm. and with the right leadership, mm. I think ECOWAS has been talking rumbling about such a thing. Mm. But my president believes that mm. this is a good opportunity for Sierra Leone mm. to see how we can rise mm. above COVID-19 uh, to the next level. Yeah, we have all the platforms, you know, to do that, yeah. uh, to talking about African cooperation and integration and mm. come on, coming up with, uh, you know, policies that are, are similar. Mm. Uh, we've been talking about, you know, um, what do they call it now, talking about Africa a peer review mechanism, mm -hmm. uh, an idea that uh, sought to bring, you know, Africans together, uh, share experiences and so on. Mm -hmm. But all of this are just becoming cliches. Mm -hmm. They are no longer effective. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can take this conversation to the next level? Because we cannot do it alone. In Africa, we must come together to look at our problems collectively and address them. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can take advantage of these platforms, the AU, the ECOWAS, you know, and all of that, mm -hmm. to talk about post-COVID-19, how do we, um, you know, reposition Africa mm -hmm. for greater heights? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a stark reality. Mm -hmm. It's out there for people to see now. Mm -hmm. A simple case you, you can tell. These mm -hmm. young folks who are trying to cross, to mm -hmm. go to Libya, mm -hmm. to go to France, to go to places, most of them are coming back. A host of our uh, fellow countrymen are in places in, in Europe. They begging to come back. Mm. So you're saying that, uh, well, we've been doing things, doing the same thing over and over, mm. expecting different results. a different result. Mm. It's a definition of insanity. Mm. If African leaders see what the West is doing here mm. now, mm. post, uh, uh, before uh, during this pandemic, mm. a simple case in point, mm. they left us to our own devices. Mm. This was going to be the hotspot. Africa was going to be the hotspot. Mm. We are going to surpass Italy. Hmm. Our debt uh, uh, here in Africa was going to explode. Hmm. I'm putting it to you. Hmm. If a coronavirus virus has been really here as you think it's here in Nigeria, hmm. with all this lockdown, 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 people should be dying like, like leaves, dropping like leaves. Hmm. So it's really tampering down a little bit. So hmm. it's a rude awakening. Hmm. If we cannot see that this is now the time for us to come together, come together. ECOWAS started what we call free movement. Hmm common currency right you know free trade right amongst ourselves this mm. this this tells us we have to put it on steroids mm. the impediments to that should be kind of uh, mm. uh, reduced mm. so that we start looking and trading amongst each other mm. you know How we can do, do we... currency swapping right we don't have to even use the dollar mm -hmm. i can buy something in, in leon's here mm. you can buy something in Nara mm -hmm. here we we'll swap our currency mm -hmm. and do our own exchange rate, mm -hmm. which is something my bank and your bank, Central Bank of Nigeria and Central Bank of Australia, we are talking mm -hmm. about before COVID-19. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, one of the major challenges is, of course, dealing with the impediments. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, let's take, for instance, the issue of common currency. Yeah. It has been on the table for a very long time, but yeah. there's a lot of suspicion around it. Exactly. And that is slowing down the implementation. Yeah. Uh, so, but then despite the potentials or the... the 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 impact it may have on our economy so yeah. how do we deal with these impediments a lot of suspicion around us yes well you see uh, when they do things like mm. common currency some people will benefit greatly mm. some are lose but you have to look at it not in a vacuum look at it how it will help collectively you see what i mean right. so these are some of the nuances the challenges that we're looking at mm. but like i say the COVID-19 mm. and how it has positioned Africa mm. to capitalize on this mm. so that we become the next frontier will at least move some of our leaders mm. who have seen what has happened to them mm. within this period whereby the whole world sealed themselves away from Africa. 
and we are left to our own devices. Mm. So, my take that some of these things have been there, mm. the impediments, the challenges, but there is always going to be a shift in mindset okay. as a result of the sheer realities of what is unfolding in our very eyes. The world as we know it mm. is not going to be again this way. Mm. Right. This guy, President, President, President mm. William Butter, mm. the racist guy in, uh, in, in uh, uh, South Africa, <laughs> we need to prove him wrong. Mm. You know what he said about mm. the African leader? Mm. You give him guns, he kills his people. Mm. You allow him to take governance, he will corrupt the, the system. system right. You know? And we really seeing that playing itself out. Mm. For so, once, so perhaps this is an opportunity to prove him wrong. Yeah, we must change the narrative. We must change the narrative. Right. Okay. okay. You talked about something the Sierra Leone is doing, which is which is of concern, of course. And yes. of course, I think should be a take home for Nigeria. Okay. You're talking about how you managing the mineral resources mm -hmm. and um, blocking the leakages. Yes. Uh, in Nigeria, we're losing millions of millions of dollars. You know. Mm -hmm resources that mm. ought to have accrued from the solid minerals exploration mm. Mm. Uh, to you know foreign connivance with foreign mm. nationals mm. with secure i mean criminal elements mm -hmm. you know chasing people away mining uh, uh gold mm. in the likes of Bundungwari, zamfara and many others mm. uh, unchecked mm -hmm. how do you think we can you know what was the success story how do you think it can be replicated here in nigeria well when the new direction of which our president, the Tab Brigadier, came into office. Mm. We quickly did an analysis of uh, our mining sector mm. and discovered that most of the mining contracts we are shady. Mm. Most of those monies we are really funneling in individual pockets. Mm. You know, and so it's really common in all other African countries. Mm. But he said, you know what? Mm. We'd rather uh, suffer. Mm. in the short term right. because these guys we are giving us pittance money every mm. month mm. for which we are able to pay salaries pay other basic things you can't take a billion and give mm. us a hundred thousand and you think you are doing a good job for us mm. so we we put a halt on some of these contracts mm. and renegotiated them so that halt that we put mm. put a strain on us mm. in terms of delivering on basic essential yes so you have to sacrifice on a short-term basis on a short-term basis so mm. that you get say, a short-term gain for long-term benefit right that sacrifice mm. although it hurts right and within that same environment mm. we have COVID. Mm. but guess what mm. we're protecting these trillions right all right and that is what we're protecting our natural resources mm. so those contracts nothing is written in stones mm. You can you can go back into arbitration and renegotiate right? and renegotiate those it should be in the benefits of our people mm. not the, the the investor the investor is doing us a good jo job mm. there mm. has to be return on investment right. but you can't get a super mm. a return on investment yeah. to, to hurt any people and just a few cabal of uh, rogue Th that, is, that is even in the case of where we have the investors like in our yes. case in nigeria yeah. it's about you know illegal mining and all of that so yes. you don't you can't have even have anyone to, to hold, hold on to. hold on to mm. yes so this is they are all over the place but you have to do policing you have to check on them mm. and that is why they have kind of controlled the mining sector a little bit we have a young and dynamic guy there uh, mm. uh julius Mata, julius Mataya. he said of the enemy and the mines minister mr they mm. call him uh, uh, mm. uh, uh yoki right uh, and uh, and the deputies there they are mm. doing very well you know and and so this mm. you, we have a system in place mm. uh, overlooked by you know uh, the president has some key interests in this sector because mm. those are the sectors that really are going to in, take yeah. us the rado rado is the the the, mm. the, the, right. the the minister of mines right you know and so um it's mm. it's going to be a gradual process mm. You can't expect no illicit mining to, to go to take on. Place, right. But when it's done at rampart stage, mm. in connivance with uh, uh, like uh, the Chinese, they come mm. there and mm. just uh, stay in the bush. Mm. Uh, you know, you right, tell me right. somebody was giving us a story about a Chinese guy who is illiterate. You give him fifty thousand mm. dollars, he can come to your country and uh, become yeah. twenty million in a few six months period. Yeah, two of them yeah. were arrested uh, recently in the you tell me. trying to you know bribe yeah. the security agencies yes, and so on. Yes. Okay. Lastly. <laughs> because yeah. time is fast spent yeah, yeah. africa you know you, you said you said something very important earlier on the issue of 
rebranding our democracy, you know, to mm -hmm. suit our purpose, yes. uh, you know, to look at, I mean, to, to, to be in tandem with our realities. Mm -hmm. uh, now, African countries have been practicing democracy, like Nigeria, you know, by next, uh, I mean, in the next couple of hours would, would um, uh, be clocking 21 years of democracy. Mm -hmm. And, but then the deliverables are not being seen. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think we can get, you know, African leaders, especially in democratic settings, mm -hmm. to give, I mean, to provide these deliverables to the people? Yeah, well, you can't just have democracy in name. Mm. If you say you're going to practice democracy, you have to follow it to the letter. Right. You know, associated with democracy is the freedom of expression, mm. the rule of law, mm. you know, the fear, uh, gender balance and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, but as mm. Africans, we have certain elements, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's say even in ECOWAS parliament. Right. Uh, there are times you will say, well, if I follow democracy, mm. I'm not going to get women in parliament, mm. uh, like women representation. Mm. Somehow you can tweet the democracy to fit social, mm. social change social norms, mm. you know, like social imbalance, you know, mm. in, in third world countries and Afri African countries, mm. the women representation. Yeah. If you leave it to democracy, you leave it to the men, mm -hmm. they will make sure that the representation of women mm -hmm. are not really encouraged. They will, they will, be marginalized. They will be always marginalized because mm -hmm. this is how past the in a mostly dominated environment whereby the woman is a little bit uh, yeah, we, we can tell about the percentage here. Mm -hmm. So democracy has to work, uh, but not in the strict sense of the word. Mm -hmm. You have to treat it a little bit mm -hmm. to encourage the space, other space. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot of people pushing for the extreme cases of democracy whereby they bring in perverted uh, aspects to our culture mm. like uh, the gays and the you know mm. you know in that kind of space whereby every aspect of community mm. is given some element of freedom right. and so we have to tailor it to our own environment right. to our own traditional values and make sure we do these things gradual gradual mm. and not to be gone who mm. that we have to follow this to the letter mm. Forgetting that, if, 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 I mean, if I see a head of state, yeah. honestly, should, yeah. that, that is, uh, there's a time limit, mm. the head of state is doing very well. Mm. And the people want him there so badly. Mm, I don't mean this referendum that you do mm. to make sure that you get that result. Mm. But generally, he's doing something good. Mm. And people want him. Right. You know, you can't say, well, the American system, mm. after two years, you have to go. Right. We have to accommodate a situation to that next level. Mm. We should you be know? able to tinker with our laws so that yes. there, there will be some level of flexibility, uh, flexibility and continuity. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for talking to us. I understand we have to round up here. I okay. would have loved to give you a minute to say yeah. something that I didn't ask you. Okay. Is there any? <laughs> well, what you didn't ask me really is that uh, there is a dire need mm. for our bigger brother, Nigeria. Mm. I've been around here for about uh, uh, one year, February made me one year. Right. I've been all over the press. Mm. I've engaged mm. the whole of the community, the business community. I've been in your face. Mm. But we've not been able to take things to the next level. Mm. What is the disconnect? Mm. There should be no disconnect. Mm. We eat the same food. Mm. We really talk the same language. Mm. Here am I dressed like you here, <laughs> sitting next to me here. You go to Sierra Leone, they say you are our brother. Right. There's nothing that is breaking us here in this good relationship. There's no barrier. No barrier. Mm. Then why are we not in the country now? Mm. Jumping. Mm. Oops. To do something. You're sitting here. Mm. Out of 13 banks that we have in Sierra Leone, mm. nine of them mm. are owned by Nigerians. Mm. And they're making money. Mm. Out of that nine, you know how many people they hire? Mm. About 95 96 percent are Sierra Leoneans. Mm. I'm not kidding you. Right. Who dominates the economy over there? Some of your brothers own one whole street, you mm. one capital street. Right. I'm saying this to you. Right. So, my, my desire is I know we're wrapping up now. My right. desire is to, to, to see how best we can take this to the next level. Mm. And the essence of this conversation is really not unconnected with that, mm. which is economic diplomacy, why I'm here, right. external resource mobilization, mm. how we get things that are working here mm. and get them to Sierra Leone mm. and vice versa. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Solomon Momo, uh, Christopher uh, Gembe, Senior.
uh, Sierra Leonean High Commissioner to Nigeria. I really um, enjoy, you know, <laughs> the conversation. Yeah. I wish we could go on and on, but uh, yes. due to time factor, Thank perhaps you. we have to take it another day. Exactly. Right. Okay. We really appreciate your uh, inputs and the program and uh, your perspectives. Uh, this is where we come to the end of Guest of the Week. And as I told you, our uh, guest today is His Excellency Dr. Solomon Momo Christopher Gembe Sr., a Sierra Leonean High Commissioner to Nigeria. Uh, on behalf of uh, himself and the team, you know, uh, that accompanied him to our corporate headquarters, we really appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, and on behalf of the technical crew here, my name is Shafiu Suleiman. Have yourself a wonderful day ahead.